Let's rock and roll, boys. Hello, welcome to another Nintendo podcast, Animal Crossing edition. I'm Matt Schultz, and I'm joined by Austin Cummings. Hi. And Gwen Cummings. Hello. As well as Jordan Weiner. Hey there. And oh, and Danny Tortelli. Hey, all. <laughs> Who's uh, sad to be our cameraman. Um, we are coming at you live from, well... Recorded from Los Buffalo. <laughs> and when um, we recorded it, it was live. It, <laughs> and it uh, it's happening in my second uh, story of my house uh, here in town. Uh, I thought we'd get everyone together to kind of talk about our, our Animal Crossing experience. We've spent a lot of time with this game, some way longer than others. <laughs> um, and I have a couple of questions. Uh, and then we're going to play a game towards the end. But... I'm really excited to talk to all of you because um, I think for everyone, Animal Crossing at some point uh, has, it's weird. I was just telling, uh, talking to a friend about this. Animal Crossing seems to show up at like these like important moments in my life and I can like look back and be like, oh yeah, I was What's like, significant about this moment? <laughs> um, uh, spring, you know, it's sprung. Spring. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, Matt, uh, uh, I'll speak, speak for all of us here just for a moment. Uh, uh, when I say that the the room in which we are recording this uh, virtually in Animal Crossing New Horizons for the Nintendo Switch is uh, truly an artistic work. And for the audio listener at home, can you please just kind of set the scene as to what, if they go to our YouTube channel, they might see as far as our recorded setting? Uh, yeah, we have um, what we call a cityscape wallpaper mm. with uh, dark hardwood flooring <laughs> paired with a white uh Oh God! What is the name of that furniture? Table, Cabana? a table. Wicker, a wicker table. <laughs> the wicker table. There we go. Uh, we stole Gwen's uh, Animal Crossing, or uh, borrowed, I should say, uh, mm-hmm. Animal Crossing New Horizons uh, Nintendo Switch. Uh, yeah. And then we have a we did a, we did a Tron was... on it and scanned it right in. So there's a little switch on the <laughs> table. There's all of us. There are multiple microphones. It's truly beautiful. Yeah. Actually, I had to steal this microphone from a animal who was singing into it. <laughs> I had it outside, and I was like, I need to bring KK? this back in. <laughs> we used yeah. to call him KK Slider. It wasn't, it wasn't KK. I dropped this microphone out like and, and randomly, and then animals will just come up to it and start to sing into it. Oh, like, Whoa. Oh, that yeah, bunch of and animals, sometimes really. they're singing KK songs. Otherwise, I'm not sure what they're singing i think they normally sing if whatever song you have playing outside if you're playing a particular song outside at least in my village that's the only song that they'll sing oh like sure. like on a radio if you like mm-hmm. register you, a kk song exactly yeah that's oh, that's i have a um like a midway area on my island so i'm playing kk dixie all the time just to really drive home the disneyland uh feeling and so all my, all my characters all sing kk dixie to me all the time <laughs> that's terrible <laughs> Reminds All me right, lightly well, of new Super Mario Brothers, where like the Koopas and everything will sing like the theme of the level you're on. Sometimes they like kind of uh, chirp it out, oh, and, like, yeah. and it's like cute at first. And then you're like, okay, like maybe no more of this. And you're like four Far-far. games deep yeah. in that series, and you're like, no more. <laughs> uh, so what I want to do is uh, we're gonna jump from question to question. Um, first and foremost, as I alluded to, I want to know what your first like experience with Animal Crossing was, and. Um, whether it's this game or it was a, a game in the past, but like when did when were you introduced to the this franchise? And we're gonna start uh, over at the end here. Sorry, I had to, I had to dust off the um, you know the the fold out chairs when I had company over, so <laughs> didn't have enough chairs. I haven't but, used these in ages. Uh, Gwen, if you can get us started, uh, Gwen was you know our most recent. Um, star on our last mm. unboxing video, which got 200-ish many views, views and not bad. Yeah, burr, 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 burr. my friends are confused. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you being here, and we're your friends, and we want to know what's your experience with Animal Crossing. When did you get into this game? Well, I think for those that watched the video, um, there was a little Freudian slip there where I described that Austin let me play mm. on his GameCube this one. Um, In truth, I was tricked into it. I do remember this being one of the first games that I could play on my own. Mm -hmm. I was really excited to write the letters 
Um, it took so long on the GameCube controllers <laughs> to write a letter, but it was <laughs> high and, like, the word would like creep over to the it other line. It still does like, that. What? I know. It's, it's, so yeah. annoying. <laughs> it's nostalgia. <laughs> Why yeah, don't they put go. the little hyphen and connect it on the next line? I like have to use like f- a four spaces, like a, like a monster in order Listen, to make it look normal. we are not here for grammar. <laughs> um, yeah. So that was my, that was my first, I can picture it in our. Basement, GameCube, very high excitement. And then I do actually have a very distinct memory of the first time Austin was not there, but I was still permitted to play. Um, We we, we worked on a simple point system. You earn up enough (laughs) points and you get 15 minutes to play on my account. It was very exciting. He went upstairs for something, but I was was allowed to continue. So So Austin really connected with the nook. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I met this guy, and you're more Isabel. All right, good enough. Um, but then I, yeah, then I, I really haven't gotten into any other game the same way. Always an Isabel, never a Nook, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> but, but yeah, now, there was the GameCube. We rented Leaf? it. Maybe I'll hop into because it's our joint, our joint experience. But we yeah. rented it from a uh, blockbuster. Nice. Uh, may it rest Ooh. in peace. A moment of silence. Ooh. Although of course R-I-P. there is one in Bend, Oregon. We get it, and. Um, <laughs> We rented from Blockbuster, and as you might recall, the memory card for it, you needed its own dedicated memory card because it required the full set of blocks on the like stock GameCube gray memory card. So um, that was the first kind of shock because we got it, huh. didn't have the memory card like from Blockbuster. Someone had yeah. not returned that, so we had to make sure there was a, <laughs> a properly sized black memory card to accommodate our new virtual lives. Austin is saying we, but I don't remember any of this. <laughs> I've never forgotten how Blockbuster did me wrong in that experience. But um, yes, yeah, so that was how we first experienced the game. And um, the rest, as they say, is this. Okay. We're still playing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about you, Jordan? Um, so I also first played on the GameCube. I must have been like, or something um and i played a lot of nintendo growing up so this is one of the formative games um and then i haven't played any since um uh, i'm primarily a console gamer so like never played any of the the handheld ones um one of my favorite memories of animal crossing is a couple of years ago when it resurfaced um to me with pocket camp which i played for like two days i decided (laughs) to dust off the the old game and my old memory card and go back to my village and i hadn't played obviously in like I don't know 15 years <laughs> and so i went up to one of the animals goldie the dog and she was like i haven't seen you in like however many hundred months <laughs> i hate you you're a terrible person how could you leave me alone awesome. with like 20 exclamation yeah. points um it was harsh it was uh, as, it was as harsh. a gamer i well, too hate hard. myself so it works out <laughs> just fine so that's me with animal crossing it's been uh, a really opportune time to have it back in my life fully again probably sure. uh sunk at least 90 hours in so far yeah those oh, villagers thanks. were they they're brutal back then i need that pettiness back you know <laughs> i need like i was a- saying even now i i took two days off because i just moved across the country and um i came back to my village today and the animals were like where have you been like i haven't <laughs> talked to you mm-hmm. for just two days so maybe You're maybe like, the I got pettiness my own is things there. going on guys. <laughs> very needy <laughs> I feel like the social component makes this one a little more savage because they often reference people who have come and visited, saying yeah. they wish they would stay. <laughs> really tugs at your heartstrings. Yikes. Anytime that happens, because you know after this you're going to be like, did you see Danny? Did you see mm-hmm. his uh, passport name? And then it's like, <laughs> right. what the hell were you doing talking to Danny? Right. Don't talk <laughs> to Danny. Don't talk to him. Clary picked up some of Matt's turnips. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have a, a ton of turnips uh, currently sitting out right now, and I had to kindly ask all of my guests to not pick any mm-hmm. of them up prior yeah, I, to I heard you, but <laughs> no one empty their pockets for right now. You no, know, I expect the Animal Crossing <laughs> community to be, you know, a nice one, a fair one. And actually, I have some stories around that. But first, Danny, tell us a little bit about your entrance into the Animal Crossing world, because this is your first game. Yeah, I first picked it up at the young age of uh, 28, and, um, you know, I wow. right when um, the world was taking a crazy turn a few weeks ago, I thought, oh, I'm going to be inside for a little while. <laughs> what better time to try a new game? Um, so, yeah, I've never really played. The closest sim sort of game I've played before is No Man's Sky. Um, 
So it's been very interesting to see a different take on The Sim. Never played The Sims back in the PlayStation Day or anything like that. Um, yeah, I enjoy it. It's a good escape. It's fun. Uh, keeps you busy. Keeps you creative. Yeah, so this game, um, I've, this is, I've played every single Animal Crossing game. Uh, but the first one was the GameCube. And my friend uh, owned a GameCube, uh, and his mom was a big gamer. And his mom is older brother, and then therefore all, like, all of them were just big gamers. And they love this idea of this like sim where you could like bring your character over via your your what was it the little memory card <laughs> and so they like kind of gave me a little bit of a demo when i was like sleeping over at their house one night and i was like why i don't know i just fell in love instantly at the idea that i could be an adult you know and like take out a loan and buy a house and fill it with furniture <laughs> and i lived with my we all two- dream of taking out a loan <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> We got to build good credits sometime, right? You got to start young. Yeah, so true. Um, and I live with my younger and older brother in uh, a bunk bed and a bed next to it. So we all were in the same room. And I think I was just like craving my own space, you know, and I got to li- live that out in Animal Crossing. Um, um, though my brother, my younger brother and I played in the same town. So that was a little annoying. Um, <laughs> but there was a race to pay off your loan so you could be the first statue. The, the like gold Ooh. statue in town which used to be a part of the game i don't know if that's a thing yet or not but um anyways then went on to play the other ones and this has by far uh been my favorite uh but this is a really interesting time because animal crossing just came out obviously during a global pandemic and this is the first one where it's directly connected to social media that in a way that people can share their experiences much more and I think that's been really interesting to see kind of this little nostalgic love that we've all had at different times in our lives suddenly is like on like a part of the national Mainstream. conversation. Yeah, it's just weird. It's weird. It's weird to see like adults that I knew growing up or people I work with in other departments here at the university who I didn't think ever touched a video game are suddenly like posting things about Animal Crossing on Facebook. And it's like, mm-hmm. Um, yeah you even see like the new york times i think or the washington post one of those two like oh this small nintendo franchise is saving people in the pandemic by keeping them inside and like they go into the history and you're like oh wow this is really hitting it big on this one isn't it it's definitely like yeah, yeah it's it's a good time to to be in uh, i guess nintendo right now and i think this game came out at a great time um and i'm really interested seeing what happens next but my next question for you all is um Ooh. how did you start this game what was your approach or your strategy? Because this is the first game where you start off with nothing. It's Breath of the Wild villager <laughs> <laughs> version. And so what did you do? Um, Jordan, let's start with you. How did you tackle this game? Um, I, uh, I would say Nook Miles tickets. Not, a, not an uncommon strategy, but that was the main strategy that I used. So um, like I said, I, I had just moved across the country and I had a really long flight right after I got the game. And so I, um, I spent like the entire six hour flight just going to different villages and harvesting and deforesting all of them. And then came back with a bunch of resources. Um, so that was, that was my main strategy to get going. And it just kind of went from there. Uh. That and money, money trees, typical ones. I am afraid of the stock market, just like I am in real life. And <laughs> same, uh, same, smart, smart. So smart. I, um, I haven't, I've been very low risk, um, low risk in terms of turnips, but. <laughs> I, I admire that. Gwen, what about you? I think um, I'm behind the curve, probably. But as I mentioned before we started recording, I am definitely in it for the long haul with Animal Crossing. I will continue to be playing this, and there will definitely not be any Washington Post articles about it anymore. <laughs> um, but I'm kind of a purist, so I don't read the things about what I should be what I should be doing to get ahead. So I'm building it up slowly using resources from my own island. I actually felt a little averse to the social component of this one. Right. um, Because there was a sense of like competition. um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of back to one of the things you've all touched on, but, you know, a lot of our friends who are not maybe traditional Animal Crossing fans have encountered it because maybe they have a partner who plays or everyone's talking about it. It's on the news. 
And um, as part of that, some of our friends also, which has been great, um, they certainly won't have listened this far into the episode, so I'm not worried about <laughs> shaming them on the air. That's in quotes. But um, but yeah, there was definitely an element of like, come on, let's hop in or let's you know trade these things. And I think uh, sometimes the pace of just playing casually on your own can be appealing. And some, uh, but it is nice that the social component is more fleshed out for when that does appeal. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, so I'd say I've, I've, got, um, I've got room to grow. <laughs> so we need to leave. Thanks for having us over. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying, Jordan? Oh, speaking of shaming people on the air, so I have a younger brother who uh, was very little at the time the original Animal Crossing came out, so doesn't remember anything, and he picked up this game um, and he texted me a couple days after getting it, being like, How oh, am I ever supposed to get? like the 98,000 bells to pay off my oh. first loan. And I'm like, oh, oh, you should, you know, do the Nook Miles, like tickets, like, you know, harvest your island. And he's like, I just don't understand how I'm supposed to get out of this tent. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? If you're working on the loan, like, don't you have a house? Oh, no. He's like, no, I didn't want to accept the, I didn't want to accept Nook's offer because I thought it would be irresponsible <laughs> to take him up on it if Smart. I didn't have the 98,000 mm-hmm. up front. I was like, oh, oh, you sweet summer child. <laughs> you don't understand how Animal Crossing works. You need you to are the dead to that like, raccoon no matter what. Towards yes, the capitalism you, of the whole thing. You it's, uh, cannot progress without doing this. Um, and so enjoy that, your that, boring that, life, person who is, is refuses to terrible. commit to our economy. Here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Danny, what about you? How did you start your uh, experience uh how did i start it a little bit of traveling to, to the rando uh islands you know just to see what other uh, uh vegetation i could get visiting friends um and then just collecting animals like crazy fishing bug catching oh not um, real i was definitely <laughs> what's that You're trying to net your aunt your villagers yes i tried catching those too um <laughs> kept away. no but like you saw on social media like all these people like in the first day they're like oh we're waiting for the museum to upgrade now oh, it's closed for another day like and they're just like piling outside of the museum um i was doing that like stockpiling them inside of my tent i was like any day now he'll reopen <laughs> um yeah actually so it was a, a lot of fun of i had no idea what i was I'll, doing I'll but it was here oh you got the picture from yeah. me yeah 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 it was terrible nice that's cute um i basically started off trying to make as much bells as possible right away um so your town shows it it looks beautiful (laughs) treat for each of us a privilege so one of my favorite memories growing up was just like fishing at night just fishing at night and then um you know now you can store fish in your house so in in the cupboards of your house or the visible storage and so i would just do that, come back until I couldn't fit any more fish, um, or I was tired, or I have fallen asleep at least twice with the game on, <laughs> mm. which I think is why yeah. the hours counter on my Switch is actually like higher. Sure, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. A lot Whatever of pause time. Say. I was yeah. sleeping most of that time. Oh, uh, so, um, but yeah, I kind of went hard in the pal- uh, paint with bells, and of course, as soon as Sunday came around, I knew like I played the turn up game pretty hard and. I wanted to make sure that whenever Joan or her her sweet granddaughter showed up, uh, that I was ready. And I like that sweet granddaughter, by the way. She's very sweet. Right. I don't like nose. her nose booger. I like everything <laughs> yeah, except her nose thing. booger. I, I, I can't get past it. Yeah, just yeah, weeks on end. Yeah, in these yeah. times, the Wind Waker yeah. fans will love the snot. <laughs> She's also oh, yeah. sneezing no. often. If you just watch her walk around, just is like, you know. Yeah, she's got a condition. Give her, gotta give her one of those face that masks. Why she I love the seeing the face masks. Feel like I know, face masks. right? Yeah. Um, uh, so, anywho, uh, I, that's why you, I've slowly upped my game, and um, I now I, I I spend a significant amount of bells at least every week on the tournament market, uh, and I'll kind of explain that a little bit in the future uh, with a future question. So, um, all right, I want to know, uh, Gwen. What was your, like, you've kind of told us, like, you're, so far, you're, you're, you're a purist. You're playing it little by little, which I think is how <laughs> ultimately the game was designed and meant to be played as, like, just take it as it comes and just relax and enjoy it. Um, what's your biggest motivator right now in town? Are you, like, what are you focusing on? Like, what do you get excited about doing as soon as the new day starts? I love the Nook Miles challenges every day. Is that what we call them? Sure. I like that. <laughs> um, how there's the, the bonus Nook Miles tasks. 
I think those are appeal. I love lists and I'm a Virgo, if that connects mm, with yeah. anyone. <laughs> we got a big astrology contingent of the fan base here. So. <laughs> um, but I love lists, love checking things off a list. So that keeps me going. It's also nice because I'll um, complete one and then go do something else and come back to the game, complete another. Uh, so it kind of keeps me, keeps me plugged in. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I'll say like as a you know traditional gamer, I've definitely used a lot of this quarantine time. I've played a little less Animal Crossing uh, than the rest of you. Partly, I've taken it as an opportunity to try to clear out some of the backlog of games I have on Switch and other platforms, and so that's been really nice. Uh, but I've played less Animal Crossing. I'm definitely coming to it more slowly, um, but still really enjoying it. But I do really like those small, like mission-based changes that the series has made. So the 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 Nook Mile, like the kind of achievement style tasks um the rewards for just checking in each day uh by going to the machine those types of small changes have made it uh given me like set goals which makes me feel a little more like my time is uh being specifically used especially because right now i i feel the need to kind of complete things uh so i've appreciated that i also like the fact that they've made the change to the holiday events obviously bunny day not like a universal hit per se love zipper but who doesn't (laughs) but like I do like the idea that, okay, there are going to be more timed events that I'm not necessarily like missing out on by not playing at this very moment, but when they come around, I look forward to playing whatever, seeing what the next one is and, you know, can re-engage with the, what the community is saying at that time and then maybe hop off again and come back. So um, those changes are definitely things I've appreciated. I'm under the impression this game also, Matt, you would know, has credits at some point or there's like... So yeah, you know, before you get the terraforming, there's like there's a, a credit scene yeah, where you, you're trying to get yeah. KK to show up to your town and with a three star rank at the very least. Yeah, who isn't? And so <laughs> for that, like, I do appreciate the game has that aspect to it that makes it feel more manageable to me. Yeah, I know a couple of people who are like, I beat it. I'm like, what? What? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's kind of. But that is. What was that? Yeah. Well, that is nice just because, as I said earlier, I'll play it for years. Yeah. And once you're kind of years in, there's, but in previous iterations, there wasn't, you weren't doing anything new. Um, so it is kind of nice to have a goal. Yeah. As opposed to just continuing to feel shamed by your games. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did have someone ask me, like, so, like, at work, like, so what, do, what happens now? What do I do after that? I'm like, you... Now you Animal Crossing. That's what you do. You play. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think uh, you got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm, <laughs> um, I'm pulling some hijinks now in, my, in the Let's Play. Uh, so, um, yeah, I would say um, for me, I forgot the, the question I even asked myself. Um, overall, though, um, I think I'm ta- I'm trying to not take it as fast uh, as I like I started off doing. Um, I'm trying to make sure that I'm like only pl- like doing a certain amount of things. But the Nook Miles have been really nice. I really like I, I like the like the little the challenges on top where you get bonuses if you like do those specific things like catch a tarantula. What like there are no tarantulas right now, but I want to make sure like by the end of the day I've at least cleared out like the five that are up there or whatever. Um, yeah. So sure. okay, I've got two more questions, and I want to know you guys can answer them in any way. And no, we'll start with you, Danny. What is your sure? You can answer. What is your surefire fire way or advice to make bells uh, in this game, or something that just like works for you? Uh, and what is one mm-hmm. like joyful moment you've had in the game so far, where you've just been like, "Oh, this is why I love this game." Oh man, so surefire way. The two ways I've found the best is I just love the action of fishing. I don't know why. It's it's just like the same thing over and over again, but I still really enjoy it. Um, so I fish like crazy. Um, Where do you land on IRL fishing? Just as like a fun point of comparison. When I was like a kid, real... I did it a little bit, but not yeah. not so much. Not so much as yeah. Adult, I'm not no. like hugely hugely into it. Yeah. Or <laughs> <laughs> <Before> I continue. <laughs> um. Gosh. Uh, so, and then on top of that, uh, just selling a ton of fruit that's natural to my island to one of my, like I just did with Matt and made pretty much a hundred thousand just walking into his island today. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a surefire way to, to make some quick dough. Um, 
What was the other question? Make quick money you can, and then... You, well, other, you can think about it. It's what's pure your joy. moment of pure joy from the game so far. Oh. So it's been whenever I've gotten the really big fish, mm. and I thought it couldn't get any better, and then I caught a giant snapping turtle. Oh, nice. Mm. I now have Carl is my pet. Uh, he is <laughs> in my house. Uh, I have a dad. dog for Trey. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Are you sure it's not That's all amazing. Thunder? You made sure. They look alike. Yeah, no, I'm sure. I know how the eyes look or whatever. <laughs> it's a hybrid. <laughs> I love that. Okay, yeah. That, I mean, the fishing, you never know what's going to come out of, of that, like of those big shadows. Seriously. I'm just hoping. Um, Gwen, what about you? Mm-hmm. What's been your surefire way to make bells, either in this game or the past? And what have you loved about this game so far? What's been your moment? Well, I um, definitely reverting back to the older games, but... Those fossils turned in, you know, get them assessed. And then if you've already got them in the museum and you sell them, great money. Mm -hmm. And beetles, I can't totally tell if they're even worth more (laughs) in this one, but they feel worth more to me because they were. It does feel like you make money pretty quickly in this one. Yeah. Yeah, They were so, they were so lucrative um, on the 3DS one. Because Gwen and I are not choosing to time travel, though if you are into it and that's your bliss, I rec- I totally endorse your chasing it, but back, I don't. <laughs> back on the original. Good, I like those hard Back scenes. on, not the original, but the GameCube version, we do acknowledge the N64 DD version, just for those true gamer fans. I know my mom's listening right now and she's like, what about the 64 DD expansion? Like, the, what about Animal Crossing on the disc drive only in Japan? How about that? Yeah, she was what blowing up the chat about but, that, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I del- delete a lot of her hate comments of like, what about the disc drive? Anyway, but for the uh, GameCube game, I know that like one of the exploits we used then was like, oh, if you take it to New Year's each year, you get like a thousand bells or something that is so inconsequential by the economy of this game. I feel like they give the bells to you very quickly, which is nice. I think back to like there are so many different types of tasks you can engage in, let alone like all the social aspects of the game that are reasonably well done for a Nintendo game. They're not right. perfect, but they're like fine. Um, that the, it's nice that you're not totally like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm really working. I'm selling every shirt off my back to get, a, you know, just a set of bells to pay, to pay the raccoon man. Like, it's nice that there are other avenues to, to get a lot of bells. Yeah. They, uh, the bells, they're like, the, you de- things are, um, you're getting more money for them, but things are actually like, things are more expensive now too. There are items that I've seen that are now like, like. Touching on inflation. Tens of thousands of more bells this time around. Like, currently in right. my Nook's Cranny, there's a, a keyboard that's 66,000 bells uh, for sale, which, I mean, Ow. Danny, you could easily buy it, right, right now. But at the same time, it's like, oh, do I want to, I was like, going to ask, actually, if you don't mind. And if you do buy it, I, I, want, I want it in my catalog, so... Uh, <laughs> anyways. You know what uh, What about, what about uh, you, Jordan? Um, I said it before, and this is a, an, an oldie but a goodie, but the money trees, putting the maximum amount you can each day into the money tree, yeah. it's basically a 20,000 bell a day salary which for is, you. Which has changed um, now. So, now that, I think it's up to it 99,000. Wait, really? I thought you could only put 10,000. Then I found out you could do 30, and I was like, oh, that's the new max. Wow, 30, you could do 30,000. And oh. then my buddy, Cody uh said no matt you can do ninety nine thousand bells and then you know so what you're spending seven hundred thousand bells but you're you're making mil- uh, like over a million uh you're netting a million bells i'm just gonna plug an asterisk on that because i've done that a few times and i have not gotten that high of a turnaround i do wonder if it brings it back down even if you do put something higher more mm-hmm. investigating is that needed on my- that that was my fear. So I just do 10,000 knowing I'm definitely going to get the 30,000 <laughs> money tree. Again, I'm a very, uh, very low risk person. <laughs> um, I like knowing I'm going to get, definitely get my, my 20,000 um, in profit yeah. each day. So nice. money trees and then also selling fruit to, um, to Friends Island. So, And then uh, right. favorite moment. The moment when I could buy the teacup ride <laughs> with my Nook Miles. No way. <laughs> when I scrolled through the new things you could buy with the Nook Miles, I was like gasped audibly at the fact <laughs> that I could buy the teacup ride. I Are we to believe very, you have like a adorable. Disneyland style island happening? Yeah. I do. I do. Yes. I have a like a little midway um, boardwalk zone. Mm, I've collected yes. all of the relevant uh, materials for it. With the trip to the midway. 
that's cool. uh, twisted the camera angle to show Danny sitting behind on his phone. Danny, you're supposed to be recording this podcast. <laughs> um, Sorry, I was just checking Facebook. A little focus. Can, okay, I'm going to quickly hop in with my most moment of joy, right. which is that although sometimes I do find myself uh, just wanting the more solitary Animal Crossing experience, it has been really fun uh, when we've gotten people together. Like, it's so silly in a way that I feel like is only acceptable in, like, a Nintendo game. Like, with this limited level of communication and how chal- how long it takes to get to someone else's island. Like, I think for other games that might be frustrating, but here it's very endearing. And it's funny and cute when people are just running around each other on an island. It's like, there's something very, like, exciting about, like, wow, this person's, like, really here. It's, like, yeah. such a simple um, act. Of course, we're all, like, for the people on the audio podcast, we're all, like, on Skype looking at our, like, real faces. It's, like, way more amazing. <laughs> but in the in the game of Animal Crossing, like, to see someone's villager, it feels very personal, and it's funny to see them run around or write, like, a very simple message or... I've had a lot of fun going to villagers, uh, to my friends' towns, and like, you know, just burying things, and they ain't fossils, or like writing on the bulletin board, or like things like that. I just find to be like so funny. Um, I'm, the reception's not always super positive, but I get like such a kick out of it, and the uh, that is definitely made easier in this version. Or even just to send friends like a piece of mail. Like, I think that's like the the ultimate way to communicate in this game because it's like so true to all yeah. the other systems. And it's so fun to get mail in real life um, that it becomes like this great little portal. Yeah. A friend of mine got a, a new type of flower from her boyfriend, and it was the first time he sent <laughs> <laughs> That is an amazing story. I like to say that I'm uh, better time. dressed <laughs> and have more things to do in Animal Crossing than I do in real life. <laughs> That's That's oh, real thank life. you. But you looked especially great in Animal Crossing. Yeah, I never said my joy, which was that you can more easily change your hair in this uh, one. That, that is true. I haven't Pretty unlocked the around, like, yeah. special hair styles yet. I've just, I'm a hat guy anyway, so. Um, all right. Um, First thing I bought. What was that? First, First thing, thing I bought. You're like, I'm going for that. Um, I, I'm actually like really excited to see what happens with some of the DIY stuff because I've kind of tapped out of those now and I don't know if more things are coming when they'll come like I'm earning Nook Miles but like they're not going to anything other than tickets anymore so um, anyway so my next event is we're actually going to run out of the island so if you've want to just hopefully we'll put it in the notes but people could just skip to this part uh, I've got two games we're going to play the first Whoa. is let's all go to my first floor and or into my uh, my courtyard. No need to brag. <laughs> <laughs> foyer. Into the yes. foyer. Yeah. Um, and what we're going to do is uh, I'll explain the rules. But there are three hidden um, pitfalls. <laughs> Turnips. <laughs> oh. oh. And the person who finds them all first loses. <laughs> well, here's <laughs> the thing. If pitfalls? you find one and you if you dig it up... Um, you get to keep it, obviously, but you that's like your token. You're like if you come and find me on the beach um, and I will be on the I'll be in one of the I'll be on the west coast of my island. There's like a little beach area with a bonfire. Come find me there and show me your pitfall um, or drop it on the ground to prove that you were first. Um, otherwise, you might fall on it because they're hidden in, a, in particular spots. You have to search all over the island, though. There's also other things buried around, so you have to make sure you find a pitfall and not something else. Uh, but whatever you... What, what, it's going to be some dynamite <laughs> audio content. Violet is outside your house waiting for us, also FYI. Dude, she yeah. shows up Players. outside all the time. And she's in I'm a like, hole. <laughs> what, what about these walls do you not understand? <laughs> oh, man. Violet. <laughs> um, Guys, I also have a confession from the <laughs> YouTube video that was made. Which is the whole time I talk about peanut. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was, talk about pizza. Someone so actually much. took my turn. Yeah, yeah, I got it wrong. I didn't even know her name. <laughs> yeah, we found out peanut was like, or peaches was a horse with like bad eyes. And we're like, oh, no. But we had to yeah. like go with it. No, it's. True, true confessions, animal. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm setting a timer, everyone. You've got uh, 10 minutes. Go. Whoa. Oh, I did not know you could Yeah, set a and actually we'll track how many oh, sure. fish and bugs you catch as well, which is kind of fun. Um, okay. Oh, uh, cool. Oh. So, That's fun. I have an idea. No, go for it. Content for this, this 10 minutes. This is freeform now. 
Okay. Um, oh, hey, guys. I have to. My, uh, so there was a data mine, as we may have seen yes. for Animal Crossing, that people came up with. So for those of you who are not familiar, data mining is when people go through the code for the scheduled updates for the game and try and glean what new features are coming to the game. And so the things, I'm going to read off some of these features and people, as they uh, may be interested, can kind of just chime in with their thoughts. So these are, again, likely features. Wait, I can't use a shovel. Because oh. <laughs> we're not best friends. And I think okay. I found one. I will uh, oh, add no. you as a best friend right now. It'll happen instantly, don't worry. Um. <sighs> Stressed. Yeah, we really need this win. Okay. <laughs> Matt, I found a fossil. Can I? Uh, can I keep it? As, as a, <laughs> yeah, as no, as you have to keep it. It's yours. You um, also, both Austin yeah, and Gwen, turnips. you both have to accept my best friend request in your app, uh, in your in-game app. Oh goodness! Oh goodness! Hey, here's an idea. Uh, <laughs> Don't put this on us. So you're right, though. So there's okay. a huge, so there's the a huge dump feature... of of yep. potential information coming from. Um, these these data miners and as you know there's a like a lot of stuff right now in Animal Crossing that's not here um, yet for example um, you know red a little sly fox who shows up and sells you mm -hmm. fake crazy furniture red. crazy red selling you that that crazy fake painting which you think is real but it's not and you get upset right. you spend a lot of bells on it um, right he's not around for example uh, you also have Brewster the owl who used to Brew coffee in and in, in some of the games at a coffee shop. Um, he also played a role in like gyroid right. collection and storage in the past. Now, is it gyroid uh, or uroid? Gyroid. And if I have a uroid, should I consult a physician? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jamie says yes. But uh, yes, the gyroids. That was another thing. That was another thing in the data mine. Crazy red and the paintings and pot potentially an art gallery. Right, which is where it typically used oh, to be. That'd be so um, cool. There's also, you know, some some other things around, um, you know, like gardening and bushes gardening. and uh, like different hedges and, and ways to kind of decorate your town, um, which we saw in New Leaf. You know, people could they're like hibiscus plants and other things. <laughs> did you did you like replant? Uh... <laughs> uh, uh, I'll talk to I'll I'll answer that once this game is over. That's I think uh, Austin went around and found, or the, either he showed up with a bunch of pitfalls and is just burying them around my island. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, yeah. So uh, there's a couple of there's a couple of things that might be coming, and and some of the things that this data mine mentioned were something around like like I think you mentioned it farming, like pumpkins and other kinds of like vegetables. Vegetables. Yeah, yeah. and that would be totally new unless I'm that would be it. absolutely new. Yeah. Um, it would make sense because they I'm did, down. I did totally just down. find a do-it-yourself scarecrow. And I'm like, where am I going to put this scarecrow? That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And also, is, are those are the crows I'm scaring away just like legitimate <laughs> villagers, like wearing clothing? And they're like, oh, that's please, funny. this is very insensitive. Uh, yeah, so that's a, that's a great segue into what do you all wish or want to see from this game in the future? Because we got, you know, the bunny day was you know, uh, an update to the game. And, you know, Buddy Day was hit or miss, um, depending on who you were. That's a fun way to describe <laughs> it. It was an and that's <laughs> And that's specifically an event, but more, there's definitely DLC coming to this game. This, this Nintendo has been, you know, getting better and better at this, especially on their Switch titles. So this is happening with this game, especially, you know, this game's meant to be played over a long period of time. So we're, we're bound to see a lot of new stuff coming. But what do you want to see that isn't here yet? Whether it's something that used to be in the game or something from your wildest dreams, shoot, go for it. <laughs> wildest world dreams. Nothing. Awesome. This game's great. Um, I don't know. Can can we think of other things we want in the game? Do you have any thoughts? Well, I don't know. I don't feel like Happy Home Academy is as challenging as it used to be. Happy Home, what? What is it? <laughs> is it Academy? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got it. Yeah, that was a joke, but also mm -hmm. real. They're um, just giving you uh, awards. Yeah, for, you know, <laughs> they're just giving you awards giving so you fast, awards. and and just you rank up only by having things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back there in used, my day, we didn't get a participation. <laughs> there used to be so much that went into strategizing, um, so I'd like to see more challenges related to that. Yeah, no, that's true. It would be neat also just to see that system fleshed out because there was always the feng shui element that was, um, you know, just a little abstract. 
And although that is true of design and it's very subjective, it would also be nice if there were like concrete things you could do to like improve. Also, did you bury any I did. Traps? There has anyone found them? <laughs> oh my gosh. No. You have to look so, uh, behind things. Are we gonna find like three of your villagers in them? <laughs> that would be great. Has anyone found a villager? There's in a newbie. A... What's supposed to happen I when I find I feel like I saw it? that once in like Wild World where a villager fell in. But uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're um, out there. Yeah, um, sure you have to look, like I said, behind behind objects and like kind of change your camera angle. Um, no, believe right, me, right. I, keep hope, I keep hoping <laughs> to fall my death and yet here I am. Yeah, but you're right about Happy Home uh, or the, the, the Academy or whatever because they, yeah. I feel like I, I like, <laughs> I have a bronze, silver and gold plaque and I, don't have any, like, there's no furniture sets right now. Like, I used to always go for, like, the ranch. Yeah, not gonna lie, your room with clothes <laughs> in it is. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you're not supposed to go in the back room. <laughs> it's called a closet. There yeah, are no, not that's enough my, clothes. That's my back room. Uh, it's basically, like, dedicated to, like, Animal Crossing tchotchkes. Uh, all the Nook stuff. I'm a big Nook fan. Um, I think that's my... My, uh... mm -hmm. We get that. It's been a lot of questions about making bells, how to learn <laughs> <the> passive bells. <laughs> <laughs> Help me make money. Um, yeah, so I would like to see this game. Um, I would love to see some kind of component around farming. I think that would be really cool. Like new ways to make money, and ultimately, um, I will. I will. I, I'm hoping to see mostly updates around like, like just. Simple things to make life easier. Oh, I just missed a fish, and all the viewers who made it this far into the podcast are going to criticize me. Um, mm. Don't worry. <laughs> but I really want to see, like, for example, I wish it were easier to just open and close my gate from, like, wherever I was in town, you know? Like, can I, like, I have a cell phone. Can I not call Mr. Dodo and yeah. be like, yeah, open my gate for me. Thanks. And I don't need to go through three or four different, like, mm. conversation bubbles to assure you that I met my friends, like all my friends. Right, there There was an article, I wanna say on Polygon, about the fishing event, there yes. was a weekend event recently, yep. and they talked about every time you catch a fish, it, you have to hit the A button 17 times to get through like yeah. all of the text prompts for like the whole fishing experience. Like, there was a lot of that. Like, I, and I don't foresee that being changed, just given the way, you know, Nintendo approaches the online stuff. Like, maybe the next one will be slightly more improved but uh yeah i think of that too like i wish i could open and close the gate remotely um i wish it's like who are you visiting you want to visit someone yeah are they here no they're online okay you got you're gonna do like m nook miles no it's like gonna be a code it's like okay well it's like gonna be a code what's the code yeah it's, you know someone's on their phone it's like oh my yeah God. then it's like stopping um, and yeah that's that's, a lot. that's really annoying um there's and there's a lot of there's a lot just so much dialogue. even with like fishing like you said like oh I've gotten pretty good at like throwing in a particular direction, you know, getting it right there. But every now and then I'm just like barely off. And why can't I just like this, this fishing, uh, you know, um, I guess style of, of play here has been the same for 15, 20 years, however long this game, 19 years. And why can't I just like bop it a little bit in another direction? Like, bloop, like right over. And yeah, it could use a little, a little, a new element. To yeah, the so that's, I mean, that's something I'd like to see. Um, but ultimately, I think my biggest wish list is I'd, I'd like to see more useful, like, storefronts and, like, fun things to, like, try to get installed in your town. Like, right now, just having, you know, the Able Sisters and Nook's Cranny and the museum and this town square, it's, it just seems a little small for how big the island is and how many things you can really do on it. So I'm hoping for, for more. I don't know. How about you, Jordan? Mm -hmm. um, I wish that you could um, have a complete 360 camera view yes. option when you're out and about in the regular town. Yes. Um, that drives just, me like, nuts. Find a pitfall and then, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, no. <laughs> I have thought this before, but it feels particularly relevant right now. Um, I, I would love that. And then just small things like we've already talked about, but also even like when I'm using. Um, island designer I feel like I constantly am like erasing paths that I wanted to build or like it's like it just it things like that feel like a little bit more um 
tedious uh, than I would like them to be. So if I could make my dream Animal Crossing, I would clean up those types of things. But um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. wait, so the great. timer went off. Nobody found <laughs> any. I now, found did you one. find one? Or did you fall on one? Where was it? I found and where did one you find it? Very much. Oh, you found it right. Here. Okay, it was in the. It was by the campsite. So there are two more, uh, yeah. and one's at the highest point of town. And oh, you found no, that I one. Found How that did one. you find? Yeah. Oh. I only found one. Oh okay, yeah, but you also. Oh, that was Danny. Danny, you found one. I okay. found the oh, one. Oh, and the then you shook the tree and dropped like seventeen sticks on. <laughs> On the crown. You're welcome. I did the work Thank for you. you. <laughs> <laughs> the Roomba right. combined just um, those up. <laughs> but yeah, no, Jordan, I agree with with everything you're saying. Uh, Danny, what what is something you're looking forward to or want to see change? And while that's happening, let's actually do a fishing tournament here, everyone. Or bugs, do, you know, do what you want. But I'm only putting. Let's do five minutes. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, five okay, minutes, fishing. let's do fishing. But bugs also. Oh my goodness. I will count bugs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for bugs but yeah, uh, Danny, what are you looking for? I 100% agree on, I wish there was 360 degree video, um, or view, I should say, um, on the outside. Because like, that and a combination of I wish you could build things that weren't so, everything has to be so square. On the, in, mm. the, the grid. Um, I think I mentioned this on our on our uh, previous, you know, uh, in another world episode. Um, but I wish like things like I could build a cul-de-sac, like I can round where the houses are placed, you know, in, in a way. Um, but everything has to be facing a certain way and like can't necessarily be on an angle. Um, this small stuff that like I'm like uh, I'll live with it, but. Um, yeah, like even when you place things, when it's like, hey, place a villager's house, place a museum, like it'd be nice to see like more of a grid based system, like how you organize your, the rooms and equipment in your house on the same level. Cause for me, it was like a mm -hmm. lot of approximation that I'd place it and then I'd look at the mini map and I'd be like, it's off. It's not where I want right. it to be. Um, and then do you want to spend like all that money to fix it? Like by a little yeah, bit? I found myself like over. counting so and like digging stuff, holes uh, and counting surprising. acres, like to ensure that something was exactly where, yeah. like even to something else. Like when I, when I placed my little neighborhood over here, yeah. I want yeah. to make sure, especially the four houses that line the beach, that they were exactly the same, like distance apart from each other, um, and that they were exactly <laughs> in front of the house behind them. Um, and so, and that was hard, especially early on in the game when I wasn't quite sure. And I was, I'm like, I placed the first house on accident, and I was like, well, I guess this is where like things are gonna start. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with there. It's the I will, I will say though the grid system has gotten better in this game. Um, I mean, especially I think the how many of you have the uh, oh, unlock the terraforming mechanic? No, so have, um, have I, you been I enjoying have. it? I I've only really done paths so far. Um, and like I said before, I have enjoyed it, but also found it annoying because I feel like, first of all, I can't get the camera angle completely right to mm -hmm. see what I want to see. Um, and then it like always is making me round a corner of the path when I really just wanted to delete that part of the path or like, I wish that, um, that was a little bit more, more elegant. So I have enjoyed it, but it wasn't uh, like a game changer for me. Honestly, it made me kind of stressed because I hadn't planned my island like that in the first place. And I have some villagers houses that a path like physically couldn't reach based on where they are. And I'm like, oh, so this should like it made me stop and rethink my entire layout of my island. And I was <laughs> frustrated because I didn't want to pay to move things. I will say that like this is definitely an aside, but, um, you know, working within the limitations of the game, I really enjoyed reading like what people have done online or just seeing funny tweets. And it does give oh, you a lot yeah. of tools to get creative, whether it's with the phone app and the patterns or uh, just people coming up with customization options that are silly. And, uh, but one of my buddies, he, and perhaps we'll have him on the show at some point, but he's super into like the making bells as quickly as possible. That's like the thing he's chasing, but to like truly a wild degree. And there's like a tier list basically online of people with like who was the most desirable animal yeah, crossing oh, villager to have in your village and and it is like true it is 
so wild. So there is, uh, I'll let him speak for it if we have him on the podcast at some point. But basically, there's an eBay economy, IRL, um, for Jeez. people to basically pay someone for like oh, yeah. Nook tickets. <laughs> like you can buy them in sets and someone will come to your village and drop them off because you've PayPal this person IRL. And then those things, um, but to do that, you need to like within your village create like a dedicated, in order for them to drop something, they have to be a best friend. But of course, that becomes a liability because say they might, you know, <laughs> take some turnips on the way out. And so what you have to do is yeah. create like these corralling uh, sets of fences yeah, exactly that direct them go. like straight to like your, exactly where to go. And so it creates this very strange, but like um, amazing system of getting people to come and uh, share in these like very rare items, rare villagers. And then people will go on, there's like a discord where people will say like, Hey, I have this villager and I would like them to leave. I'll trade you for another villager. So basically, no, they, okay. No, this is yeah. really the core no, of get, what animal crossing get, is. I love this they debate. Their villager to be like in boxes. So like ready to move out and then someone will come and like talk to them and then that'll cue them to move. Like it's wild. It is not how I like. I appreciate play, you I can appreciate too. You can. Uh, uh. I had a fish on the line also. My oh, fishing no. rod like broke in the middle I also of this. Wanna, I just want that stated for the Danny record that Danny I, I lost about 30 seconds. A ter- have, he has terrible fishing etiquette, okay? If you're fishing, you throw your line, he's going to run right up to you, <laughs> and he's going to cast his line right next to you, going for the same freaking fish. Hey, it's is not just, my fault. You didn't Danny, I get, it right I, first I literally <laughs> had a fish on the line. I, I think that's you're new to the game franchise, Danny, broke. but that is not the way it's done. <laughs> I'm an old get off my lawn. No. Uh, <laughs> oh, that that sounds like, like, like a last true second last place. Uh, no, <laughs> okay, so this is a great debate. Uh, when I'm glad you said you said you spoke your piece a little bit, and so did Jordan, because I recently had a conversation with a friend. Uh, I was telling him about my 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 turn up happenings, um, and so what I do is I draw the line at paying real money for anything in this game um, to kind of advance your, you know what's going on in your town. I don't think that's what Animal Crossing was meant for, but people, you know, that brings them enjoyment. And if they want to do that, they absolutely can. Um, however, uh, I play the turnip market pretty heavily as evident by my uh, my dock area. I've got a, a million bells worth of turnips there. Uh, and I spend about a million on turnips every week. However, um, the turnip exchange website is a dedicated forum website to introduce yeah. players to each other who are whether want to host or visit towns. And it's really intuitive to the point where, you know, if you're if you're got a great turnip price, you can go there, you put you log in, putting in your your town name, your user like friend code, and then uh, your villager's actual name. Um, and then you can basically add yourself to someone's queue. And let's say like Danny's village, Danny's not someone I know or, or something, right? He's out in the world and Dandelore is selling turnips for or buying turnips for 400 bells. And I'm like, yep, I want to go make sure I'm making as much money as possible. I can then put myself in Danny's queue and then the, the website at, at some point will, depending on what that player allowed, will allow me into their like their main four of their queue once i get to the top four and then their dodo code will show and then using that dodo code i can then finally log into their town now of course i'm going to be making a lot of money what's in it for the player who's hosting well the animal crossing community is great um it's also greedy (laughs) so a lot of people are asking for different things Mm -hmm. um most most notably people are like can you please leave ninety nine thousand bells which really for the people who are doing this that's a drop in the bucket so I will gladly give you 99,000 bells for access to your 400, 500, 600 bell turnip price to unload my million bells worth of turnips on. Um, some people ask for a lot more than that, and that's pretty greedy. Um, but, you know, they're right. Some people literally, like you said, <laughs> will fence off the airport to nook, Nook's a cranny and back, and you cannot go anywhere. Yep. Uh, I've seen on this app, as I've traveled to several villages, people have created giant uh, like ads from the sky. Because, you know, you're flying in and people are waving at you and they've created these like drop bells here yeah. or welcome, like uh-huh. with their like the price of admission, like out, like all spread out on the floor. 
<laughs> that is so wild. But I do. I've love heard that people term. have um <laughs> have bouncers too. Like they'll have people that stand in front of the door to their shop until you drop whatever yes. the thing and is, so and then that, they'll move out of the way so you can actually you get it. They'll That's well, they'll make amazing. a fence, and then the fence will be just one person's like width, and so that's helpful uh, because you got to make you have to block the entrance because at any point someone can press like any of you can press the minus button and end your session and leave <laughs> without having to go to the airport. So covering up your nooks, that's the precious commodity, is definitely a thing. And having a friend be your bouncer <laughs> and then also paying them <laughs> to be there. So here's my story. Last Thursday. That's After amazing. or morning, I logged on like briefly in the morning and I had already sold my turnip. So I like to check just to know, just to burden myself. Sure enough, my turnip prices were 610 bells per turnip. And I was like, oh my Whoa. God, what time yeah. is it? It's 10 o'clock. I have two hours to make as much money as possible on the turnip exchange by inviting guests. I had never hosted before. Uh, many people came. I made about 3 million bells by hosting people. But a few people wow. left without paying. Um, <laughs> my what soul. did it cost you? But, but look at this bridge <laughs> and look at this. <laughs> yeah, so that's We're my story. We're reaping the benefits now. It, it, it's, a, it's all a metaphor for life. <laughs> you know, are you trying to succeed? Mm -hmm. It's a metaphor for life. Are you trying to succeed or are you trying to love? I am job so searching true. right now and I am looking for higher pay. So maybe measure. this is my like, <laughs> this is the way I get it out. Like pay me. <laughs> I love this it. This is the way. Me, me, me yeah, it's, too. It's also like a fun sim component because it's like I'm less likely to ever become a bouncer <laughs> IRL. But like in yeah, this I way, can, I can enjoy what You can also what dress the like. part too in this game. I've got a full leather jacket you can, you can throw on. You can put scars on your face using the... Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so anyways sure. so yeah, cool. a friend of mine heard all this and said like boo to you that's not how you pay, play animal crossing and uh he's more I like he's more really. of a purist um but gwen i'm interested in hearing about from gwen and, and jordan what do you think about that style of play is it wrong for me to to be exploiting other people's towns and this the internet to benefit my own Or would you, you can, like you to can take it off? Subtle though. head shake. Digitally. <laughs> Jordan, you want to go ahead? Oh, sure. I mean, I guess I don't feel that strongly about it. I don't love it. It's not an approach that I would personally take. Um, but for me, I'm like in this game for like the pure nostalgia. Um, and I am playing it similar to how I would have played it when I played the original when I was 10. So like, it's interesting to me when you run into these moments with the game where it's like a game for kids that's clearly now being played by adults who are playing it in a very like adult way um and i i don't i guess i don't really personally have a problem with it but it's just right. a very different way than how yeah, i'm engaging fair. in the game what about you Gwen? i would say i'm gonna i'm gonna uh stand with my feelings that animal crossing is a <laughs> good old metaphor for life Yes. Also colonialism, think about it. <laughs> but um you should play it however you want to play it. And it is cool that they have the um the options and it the world is so connected that you can do all sorts of crazy things. And you know, if you come to my island right now, I would probably feel shame because it's quiet <laughs> and there's not a lot going on. So to each their own. Yeah, and I'd like to just offer a third point and say, Matt, the police are on their way. <laughs> I do like, though, that it's possible. It's so wild. I like that, you know, Nintendo is so weird with their rules. I'm glad this game still can operate like this. I'm honestly surprised time travel is even still possible, given how, like, shaky and poor the implementation yeah. is of data transfer between switches. Um, and there's no save data backup on this game. And that is such a mess. Like, and to think that we have all of those limitations and yet you can still time yeah. travel. It's like, what? You know? That exploit is easily easily accessible, and yet I can't back up my save, like because of fear for exploits. Like it doesn't make it's so inconsistent. But the I do like though that like people have found these creative ways to uh, make their own experience that's fun for them, and that's that's solid too. Because it's, of course it's all optional as to how you like to explore. If this were an Animal Crossing MMO and everyone was in the same right. world by default. I think feelings would be different. Why drop jail totally bars? To way to <laughs> what are you trying Wait. to say? <laughs> no, I found oh, I found me. those. Um, but one thing a friend of Austin and mine 
does is she comes to our islands and she just runs around in circles. And so I'm trying to emulate her. Uh, I love that. I've, cool I've so. <laughs> what, a, what a way it's to end the episode. True, yeah. huh? It's just a game. I, I love that people have come up with their own things. A couple of weeks ago, I was at a town that someone completely terraformed to turn into a giant board game for four players. Yeah, with you like went into what? the That's Able awesome. Sisters, so cool. you picked up a t shirt with your team on it, like logo, and he had four different t shirts because there were four options for him to create like a custom shirt. Pretty much. Right, I think he monkeys, did it like after like D and D. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Thanks. Anyway, so um, it was really fun. Like there was like giant tic-tac-toe and like there was like a, a forbidden forest where you had to like craft your way out um, in one direction. And then it was cool. He had like these first, second and third place markers on the floor everywhere. And it's been really cool to see the community just come <laughs> together and do that. Yeah, where is our next like Love is Blind season where people like meet via Animal Crossing well, and if it... they like can engage with each other? <laughs> I could tell you a lot about a person. I'm going back, <laughs> Animal Crossing, a metaphor for who you well, are. It's true. It's very useful. That is true. To me it's like it's like how people do speed runs of games or people who do play Zelda but they only keep free hearts the whole time. Like there's so many different mm -hmm. ways yeah, that people can get creative with so games. Rude, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not how I that's like not what I the, how I get enjoyment out of a game, but it's neat to see how different people Yeah, um, this uh can kind of make the game I around. will say that's that's exactly. also been a few articles that have been out given the popularity of the game and now it's like wide appeal during a time when people have a, more free time on their hands and are looking to buy switches and this game is they're looking for this game to play right away people are like you know either feeling shameful or jealous or like i don't know it's 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 creating kind of a like a nasty like appeal of the game around how you view yourself and your town and i've which is like the exact opposite of what the game is kind of meant to be um but for me doing what i do with the turnips i see a lot of towns who've either time traveled or have gone way above and beyond or have way too much money, or they've just done so much. And the first like two weeks, I was feeling really crappy about like, I am never gonna, oh, I just lost a bug. Um, my town's never gonna look like that. And then I had to remember that this game is about, the, the, <laughs> Gwen, stop hitting me the shovel. Uh, it's about that though. <laughs> and that's uh, the we show. All showing off things? Okay. So I guess it's a good way to end. But this game is about taking it slow and doing your own thing and enjoying it the way you want to. And and I, I hope Animal Crossing continues to be that. Well, I can't show a damn thing off because because I oh, I'll drop either. a turnip. I scared all of Matt's fish away. <laughs> <laughs> I just sold that's, a bunch of stuff. That's very fitting. I'll drop the eggs I'm still holding on to only because I use them instead of fruit to pick up freeze. That's hilarious. Right. Hey, well, this has been... Uh, this has been <laughs> Dude, I found it. This has been a nine and ten podcast. This was a lot of fun, everyone. And maybe we can just do a, a, like a smaller Let's Play in the future. But um, hopefully, Gwen, you'll return for another unboxing and jordan for another video in the future uh it's been awesome having you two on the on the show and until next time everyone um i've been matt and <laughs> we have <laughs> danny austin gwen and jordan and this has been another nintendo podcast see you all in the next one